Well, good morning, Olive Branch Church. Pastor Wesley here. Uh, it is Sunday morning, April 19th, just after 9 o'clock. And I know in the past several weeks I've said that I'm sitting in an empty sanctuary when I should be anticipating a revival for church and worship and prayer together. And while we do anticipate getting back together, I, I realize that these teaching videos are one of the ways that we are coming together uh, to worship uh, to, and to teach and to be together as a church body. So, welcome to church. Also, uh, just a few kind of announcements or things I'd like to mention first. First of all, the church, uh, the leadership greatly appreciates uh, your generosity during this time. We have truly been blessed by those that continue to give, uh, to mail in their tithes and offerings, allowing us to continue to minister to you and, and to others as those needs are made present to us. Also, uh, the Indiana governor has also extended the stay-at-home order until May 1st, which is just one more Sunday uh, for us. However, I think that they're talking about uh, having kind of a rollout of opening things, but I'm not exactly sure where church has fallen at, so it may be extended further yet. Uh, I also know that, or I've heard from my wife Tracy, who works for a large medical group, that this, the CDC and others are expecting a possible surge in about the third week of May or so with this coronavirus. So it's possible that it could be much longer. But I want to take this time to teach this morning. I pray that this will be encouraging to you. Now last week, we it was Easter, and we talked about um, how Christ came back to life and how he returned to earth to be with his disciples um, for a short time. Now, he stayed just long enough to commission the disciples to do his work. You know, after 40 days, he ascended into heaven and he told his disciples that they would preach repentance and forgiveness of sins to all the world after he was gone. Now, he also promised that he would send the Holy Spirit to guide them on this journey. So Jesus was crucified at Passover and raised three days later. And he was crucified on a Friday and he rose on a Sunday, which that counts as three days because it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I know we would normally count that as two, but Jesus rose on Sunday. And then he appeared to his disciples for 40 days. And the gift of the Holy Spirit that was promised came at the next Jewish religious holiday at Pentecost. Now, if you could look back at a, a Jewish calendar of, of when the holidays fell, you would notice that the time between the ascension and the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost was nine days. So what did the disciples do during this time? There isn't a lot of information about this transition, but let's look at the books uh, of Luke and Acts. Now, some of you might know this already, but I just think it's worth pointing out that Luke obviously wrote Luke, but he also wrote Acts. In fact, the first few verses in Acts refer back to his previous writing. Uh, so you could look at the book of Acts almost as Luke part two. Let's start with the verses that we focused on last week, which were Luke 24, 46 through 48. But I want to also add verse 45. So let me go ahead and read for you Luke 24, 45 through 48. Then he opened their minds so they could understand scripture. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. So just before this nine-day transition period occurred, Jesus did several things. First, he opened their minds so they could understand Scripture. He also told them uh, repentance and forgiveness would be preached. And third, he told them that they would be his witnesses. In other words, that they would be the ones that would preach uh, this repentance and forgiveness, this gospel to the world. And last, he also told them that they would start in Jerusalem and they would expand from there. Now, verse 49, which we didn't read, goes on to promise the gift of the Holy Spirit, as we just mentioned a minute ago. 
so that he could guide them and give them power to preach the gospel boldly as Christ desires for them to do. Now, what did the disciples do after Jesus ascended? Because those things he told them just before he returned to heaven. In Luke 24, verses 51 and 52 this time, it says, While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. So as soon as Jesus left, as soon as he left, his disciples worshipped. They then returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they continued to praise and worship him there. Now, what if we took this time, this transition that we're going through, acknowledging Jesus as the Messiah and worshipped and praised him? Wouldn't we draw closer to him during this time, even though we're not able to meet and worship together? What if we continue to live with the joy that comes from knowing that Jesus is my Savior? Wouldn't the joy, wouldn't our joy stick out from so many others right now that are living, that are afraid and and living with uncertainty during this unprecedented time? If we get into Acts a little bit, verse 14 of the first chapter, the first thing they did upon arriving back to this house that they were staying at was to pray. In fact, it says that they joined together constantly in prayer. What if we as the church, even as, as the church, you know, global, worldwide, all of Christ's body, all the believers, what if we join together in constant prayer? What if we even just did that as Olive Branch Church? We don't need to physically be in the same space to pray together. But what if the entire church began praying about our ability to boldly present and preach the gospel after this time of transition? This virus might just be what causes people to seek God or at least seek answers. I know that during this time that many of us, many believers, have questioned how we are going to go on as Christians during this time. How do we go on as the church without being able to meet together? Many see this time as a hindrance to our individual walks of faith as well. But I honestly feel that this time could be a great thing for our church. We can use this time of transition to really focus on our prayer lives. We can continue to strengthen our personal relationship with Jesus without the worry of what others around us might be thinking. You know, we we worship not to be seen by others sitting near us, but we worship for an audience of one, of God himself. We can learn and remember that the joy we have inside of us comes from Christ, not from singing our favorite church song or from seeing other people. We will also learn that our ability to meet together weekly to worship is something that we have been taking for granted. Maybe this transition time will give us a desire, a deeper desire, a deeper hunger for church, for meeting together, for corporate worship, and for praying for each other, maybe greater than we've ever had it before. Now, I also believe that this time will push many others to seek God, to seek answers, And that we will have a great opportunity to harvest a ripe field of non-believers after this time. If only we can use this time to prepare for such a harvest, just as the disciples did. Let me uh, pray for you. Jesus, we thank you for this time of transition. This is a time that we can truly focus on worshiping you. Uh, God, I'm praying for each other that we can deepen our personal relationships with you, that we can prepare the church for a harvest that it, that could be coming in, in a huge way. God, I pray that as we meet together, whether it's through video or through sending prayer requests, as we pray together, 
as we pray about the same things together, that we can continue to strengthen the body of, the, of Christ as well, that we can continue to prepare ourselves uh, to preach the gospel boldly, especially to those that we'll be seeking after this time. God, I pray that you will give us, uh, through this time, a strong desire to worship together, that when we come back together, our worship will be dynamic, our prayer will be deep, God, that our relationships will be strengthened, that we will truly understand the value of meeting together as a church body. But until then, we pray that you will continue to strengthen us as we participate in teachings and, and prayer requests and, and many things together. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you and God bless.